Hello everyone and welcome back. So far we have seen the diminished radix and radix complements of the different number system. In this session we will discuss the logic behind the diminished radix and radix complement. So without any further ado, let's get to learning. Coming to the outcome of today's session, today we will start off with understanding the logic of complementary number systems. Thereafter, we will go through a detailed study of diminished radix complement to determine the problem associated with it. And finally, we will learn about the remedy provided by the radix complement. Now, if you recall the session Introduction to Complementary Number Systems, there we wanted to come up with an architecture which will be able to perform both addition and subtraction. Since then, we have been observing how complementary number systems are used to represent the negative magnitude of any number in any number systems. Now, the question remains why? Why are we interested in representing the negative magnitude? Think about it. Say we want to perform the subtraction a minus b. Now, can we perform this with an adder circuit? Turns out we can. We can perform it like this. So, instead of b, if we can come up with the negative inverse of b, then we can perform the subtraction through addition. Now, the negative inverse of any number, if added with that particular number itself, will result in zero. And the complementary number system helps us find out this negative inverse. So, this is the logic behind the complementary number systems. Now, let's dig the diminished radix complement bit deeper. We know that the b minus 1's complement of a is b raised to the power n minus 1 minus a. Basically, this is the negative inverse of a in diminished radix complement. Therefore, if we add a to it, we are supposed to obtain 0. Now, cancelling out these two a's, we are left with b raised to the power n minus 1 equals 0. Okay, let me illustrate this with some examples. Let's see what it means in base 2. Now, for base 2, the diminished radix complement is 1's complement. According to what we have derived, this should be 2 raised to the power n minus 1. That is, n number of 1's. And according to this equation, it is 0. Therefore, in base 2, all zeros and all 1's both specify the symbol 0. Consider the base 3 number system. Here, the diminished radix complement is 2's complement, which according to this equation would be 3 raised to the power n minus 1, which is n number of 2's. So, in case of base 3, all zeros and all 2's both specify the same symbol 0. So, apparently, for every number system, all zeros and the pattern with all the symbols with the highest magnitude will specify 0. Now, why is that? We know adding a number to its negative inverse results in 0, right? And this is by definition is the negative inverse of A in diminished radix complement. So, to make it work in diminished radix complement, we consider B raised to the power n minus 1 as 0. That means, for a single symbol, we are having two pattern. Well, this is wastage. And this is the problem associated to diminished radix complement. Now, radix complement proposes the solution to it. Observe, if we add a with its negative inverse, that is a bar, in terms of radix complement, we are adding a with b raised to the power n minus a, which will result in zero. Now, if these two a's cancel themselves out, we are left with b raised to the power n equals 0. Now, observe closely. Say a and a bar both are of n digits. Although it is addition, but we are actually performing subtraction in here, aren't we? Now, think about it. Subtraction between two n digit number can at most result in a n digit number. It can never be more than that, correct? Now, this b raised to the power n means 1 and then n number of zeros, that is, a number of n plus 1 digits. Therefore, in radix complement, we are to discard this one and only consider the remaining n digits. And see, here 0 means n number of zeros. 
So in radix complement, the symbol 0 is represented by all zeros only. So in this session, first we understood the logic behind the complementary number system. Then we studied the diminished radix complement in details and came across the problem it has. Finally, we observed how radix complement provides a solution to that problem. Alright people, that will be all for this session. I hope now the logic behind the complementary number system and along with that the concepts of diminished radix and radix complements are clear to you now. In the next session, we will see the subtraction in diminished radix complement. So I hope to see you in the next one. Thank you all for watching.